Welcome to my voyage to the Sunken City card reveal. And this time around, I got a special one. It's a legendary minion, and his name is Sir Fin... Wait. No. Okay, so it turns out I was supposed to reveal Sir Finley, but uh, things happened. And the great thing about Sir Finley is all you got to do is play him and you'll get some new cards. That's right, Blizzard was kind enough to swap out my Sir Finley review from the bottom of their deck and replace him with three new cards. These are the divers. We've got the Gangplank Diver, a Pirate, the Slime Scale Diver, a Murloc, and the Pelican Diver, a Beast. And these each have the same style effect. They're diving underwater, going dormant for one turn, and then they're rushing back up uh, to the surface with Rush, and doing some cool stuff like uh, just taking a big old trade for a one minute card uh, with a Pelican Diver, going immune with the Gangplank Diver, or even having Poisonous here with the Slime Scale Diver. So I want to dive into these with a little more depth. Let's first talk about the Pelican Diver and don't look too closely or you'll notice that he's eating Nemo. I don't know if they're going to find the poor guy, but the Pelican Diver is a 1 mana 4 1 beast. It's dormant for one turn, which isn't much, and it has Rush. So the applications for this one, I think, are kind of intriguing. Uh, you slap this down on turn one, and basically you're creating this high friction moment for your opponent where kind of any minion they play is probably going to die to the Diver. You just can't really put just. What do you do? You're stuck. It's like, oh man, that diver is going to take a great trade. And really, I'd say up through the mid game, that's often going to be very true. If you have a four attack mini, that's going to contest a lot of stuff, which is going to create some problems for your opponent. So they might just have to delay their turn for a little bit, wait, and then in like ping off the diver for later, which might really disrupt their curve and uh, make them commit mana and plays they don't really want to be making because it's such a high friction card. I think there's also some surprise utility here with a card that's only dormant for one turn. For instance, if you think about the new Shaman spell, Bioluminescence, which is totally beautiful, by the way, uh, it wouldn't be hard necessarily for Shaman to run a couple Pelican Divers to set up for a next turn Bioluminescence. So they have a couple just small mana commitments now, but then have two extra bodies guaranteed on board leading into their bioluminescence turn. You could theoretically do that with the other cards. They might just be a little bit more expensive, but a setup turn into some crazy bioluminescence action could be a surprise way the Pelican Diver actually gets played on top of just being that turn one uh, threat or counter threat. So next up, let's talk about our Murloc buddy here, the Slime Scale Diver. This is a three mana, two four Murloc. It's got Dormant for one turn again. It's got Rush again. And in this case, it's got Poisonous, which can make this card really frustrating, I think, to play against if you're playing a bunch of big threats and big minions in your deck. It's got that vibe where it's like, oh God, I just cannot play my thing. I have to wait for this Slime Scale Diver to pop up first. Then I have to kill the slime scale diver, and then I can finally play my big threat. And we've seen teases of this with cards like Venomous Scorpid, where sometimes that Scorpid gets played down and it just like really disrupts your opponent's flow because they have to deal with the Scorpid first before they can play things. As somebody who plays a lot of greedy big decks, I've had that feeling a lot. I think the slime scale diver even takes that to another level because they can't even deal with it. It's dormant, so they're just stuck there, and they might basically lose two turns waiting to play their thing or they know that the diver is going to kill it because they got to wait one turn for it to pop up then they might have to spend the next turn spending mana to deal with it which might make them unable to play their big threat and then finally the turn after that they can play the big thing and by then you've played another slime scale diver and the chain continues uh so that's pretty spooky but even if you're not like using it as a big you know friction tool like that i think in the mid game 
as a four health minion, this can still value trade over a lot of stuff while maybe contributing to something like a Murloc board game plan. We've seen some Murloc Shaman cards floating around, a few new ones popping up as well. And maybe this just slots into a Murloc deck that's trying to win the board in the mid game because this thing is so efficient at dealing with so many different sizes and varieties of threats. So finally, let's talk about the Gangplank Diver here. This is a big old pirate, a five mana, six, four, He's also dormant for one turn. He's got rush and he's immune while attacking. So uh, this is another minion that can be great at cleaning up your opponent's board, but has extra survivability. So not only are you going to be able to contest their thing, but you're going to be leaving behind a pretty threatening six attack minion, which in some cases could be a lot for your opponent to deal with because this just takes such a clean trade while depositing that aggressive sort of threat. So could this slot into the mid range of something like a pirate warrior deck, perhaps uh, just to really help them win the board while setting up for some big Rokara uh, swings with the juggernaut shortly thereafter. Also, if it gets summoned off of the juggernaut, I think it could create some interesting moments where it's delayed for a little bit. So you can set up for like one really big push and that could cause some problems for your opponent because often if they're able to just handle one pirate at a time being, uh, you know, doled out by the juggernaut, it's a little bit easier for one at a time. But if you suddenly unleash a few at once, that could create that overwhelming surge of stuff uh, that's more problematic than than meeting it out a little at a time. There's also a combo set up with this, right? Because it is a big six attack minion, because you could play it on five and you know it's going to be there on turn six. Guess what that means? Play this on five. Mr. Smite on six, boom, that's 12 damage of attacking pirates, which isn't a ton, but it's sometimes going to be enough of a setup. And uh, theoretically, if you're really late in the game, you could even play two of these uh, for 10 mana and then play Smite the following turn with some more stuff for some big, crazy burst damage action. I don't know how efficient that'll be. That's a lot of mana to spend, but still a theoretical possibility with these dormant for one turn cards. I think they create some really cool setup opportunities. So there you go. Those are Sir Finley. No, those aren't Sir Finley. Those are the divers. And I think they're pretty cool. I was surprised how much uh, one little thing like dormant for a single turn could really add up to create some some neat play scenarios. And I think so, some surprising ways for these to get played. Sometimes you look at cards like these, and you think, ah, these are just filler or arena cards. But each of these offers something distinct that I, I do think give them more opportunity for real competitive Hearthstone action than you might otherwise think. So keep an eye on all three of these. Let me know what you think about these cards in the comments below and stay tuned for my official review of these cards in the near future. Shout out to Blizz for offering me this card reveal and uh, reacting in a pinch actually to get some replacements. That was really cool, Blizz. So appreciate that. Thanks everybody for watching and until next time, game on.